Hi there, Booktube. It's Roz, and I'm here with the second of my three Best of 2023 videos. Now, three videos because what I read is really varied, and there's some things that you just you can't realistically compare, even though in all these videos, what I'm doing is talking about my favourites of the year, not, a, you know, trying to argue that they are in any way specifically the best. But um, the other thing that I do know, though, is that, that some of the different things I read appeal to different different people. So splitting it into three gives you a chance to pick the ones that interest you. And this video is all about the translated fiction I read in 2023 and my favourites um, from that. And I read a fair bit and I've, I've narrowed it down to a top five plus three honourable mentions. Yeah. Um, so let's go for it. First honourable mention is a book by Han Kang. Now, uh, this South Korean author uh, kind of really won a lot of fans and a lot of attention in the English-speaking um, reading community when um, their first novel, The Vegetarian, which they wrote, oh, now, I don't know, back in 2007, I think it was published, um, but, you know, it came out. Uh, an English translation in um, 2015, and it's been, you know, very popular ever since with a with a certain sort of of, of, of reader. I read, came to that relatively recently, so when I heard that in 2023 there, there was a new translation of um, one of her other novels, um, and that's um, Greek Lessons, which. Again, I think she wrote or originally published in 2011, but, you know, new, newly out in English, available in English in 2023. Same translator, Deborah Smith. Uh, you know, I was excited to pick it up and read it. Now, what I have gathered is that um, Greek Lessons has not been as uni universally kind of uh, fated, enjoyed as The Vegetarian. But actually... I almost preferred it, but I think I'm, you know, a little unusual in that. It, it, I think perhaps the reason why it's it's less immediately engaging is the vegetarian has like a really strong, um, a really strong plot. Uh, you know, the, the story, the story is very sort of easy to to latch onto, whereas Greek lessons. It, there's much less of a, a story. It's about characters and language and loss and, and and sensory loss. And but I really liked those two kind of quite uncomfortable, uneasy central characters and, and finding out more about them. So that's one honourable mention. Honourable mention number two is Gacha Gocha by um, Vivek Shanbag. K. He it was published in India in um, 2015 and the translation by Srinath Perua came out in English in 2017. So recent but not very, very, very recent. And um, one thing that I've realised is that I've read a lot of books from the the, 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 the Indian subcontinent overall, you know, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, so on, um, in, written in English. Um, but what I haven't done is read so many that are translated from the, the many languages that are used around the Indian subcontinent. And that if you do read those translated books, you get a different dimension, a different perspective, I guess. You know, the people that choose to write um, in those languages are perhaps writing for a, um, a local audience more. And so, yeah. Uh, it's a different twist. This book is set in present-day Bangalore, and it, it was written originally in in the language of Canada. Um, it's it it kind of shows you how Bangalore is now a kind of huge, growing city, pulsating with life and commerce and activity. But the family at the centre of this plot of story are are very claustrophobic. They're kind of turning in on themselves, um, and it's all to do with money. There's a kind of a quite a satirical quality of this book. It's also it's full of telltale details, um, and reading it, you get a kind of a growing sense of unease. Yeah, definitely deserves its place as an honourable mention. I, you know, uh, I, all, all these are, are books I'm recommending, I guess, um, as worth your time. 
third honourable mention goes to a, a, a modern classic, a modern classic from um, Brazil. And that's Gabri Gabriela Cloven Cinnamon, which was um, originally published in um, 1958. Uh, it's by Georges Amado. Uh, I read a translation by James Taylor and William Grossman, uh, which I think came out in 2005, but it's a bit hard, a bit hard to tell, a bit confusing. Could just have been the edition that, uh, that I read. It's set in the 1920s in a kind of coastal settlement in Brazil that is growing fast, that is um, uh, developing because of, of money from cocoa um, plantations that have been like kind of fought for and hacked out of, um, uh, you know, the 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 um, the area by sort of settlers sort of taking land and taking control. And um, so yeah, key moment, I guess, in, in the history of, of, of the, the modern nation of Brazil. As a book, what's it like? It's it's full of larger than life characters and kind of almost ridiculous storylines. Um yeah, sort of melodramatic, you know, or hard to believe. Um lots of characters, lots of odd things going on lots of violence lots of um uh, sex look uh, it's almost a bit bewildering at first you know too many characters too many storylines too episodic but after a while it just comes together magnificently yeah, i i really enjoyed it a lot so honorable mention number Oh, no, that was my three honourable mentions. I'm on to my number five in my ascending five to one top five translated novels. And number five is a, a graphic novel or comic. And um, it's by um, Dina Mohammed. It's called Schubeck Lubeck, or in England, it's been um, published as Your Wish is My Command. It's, she wrote it and drew it, and she also did the English translation herself. So it came out in three, three sort of three parts um, in sort of 2015 to 2018, but the English translation came out all in one, all in one go in 2023. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very new book. And I loved it. Oh, it was brilliant, delightful, very lovable book. Very visually strong, you know, which is one of the things I look for in in, in, a, in a comic. Um, it, but also full of kind of ideas and emotion and you know story uh, as well. It's um, it's it's set in what is recognisably um, present day Cairo, um, with all its all, all that that brings. But a kind of in an alternative version of the world in which wishes are a thing, um, you know, something that you can mine or, or refine or manufacture or sell, you know, and people do buy and sell them, there's different grades of them, you know, and um, that is so cleverly used. It, what she kind of does is you get kind of you get kind of three layers in this, I suppose. You get the fantasy bit about, you know, how does that work, you know, making making that um work, and you get little kind of um what you might call factual chunks about the history of wishes or um you know how wishes were misused in world war ii and so the the un have had to do a declaration about you know uh, uh, the human use of wishes uh, so you get that layer you get a layer which is three stories of three people living in cairo and their back history and why they why they might want to use a wish and and what the impact of that is and they're all sort of different different classes different sort of um yeah uh ages you know so and then it is also undoubtedly a kind of a bit of a political allegory for present day egypt what's happening there but actually, not just Egypt. I mean, it also I guess it speaks to globalization, commercial commodification um, of our lives. Uh, it, it, yeah, sort of political corruption, um, misogyny. You know, in 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 the world in general, not not just Egypt. Um, so definitely, my top. Um, graphic novel or comic of the year, but and and you know, absolutely earns its place in my top five 
books in translation, um, novels in translation. Number four is another um, modern classic from Latin America, but Mexico this time, so Central America. Um, it's uh, Pedro Paramo by Juan Rufo, Rufo, the Mexican author. It was, again, from the 1950s, 1955 this time. Um, I read a translation by uh, Margaret... Um, oh, is it Margaret... Let me... Margaret Shaw Pedden? Yeah, I'll write the right words in the description um and which is from like the 1990s but i should say there is a brand new translation which came out in september this year so almost simultaneously with me reading this because i read it in shorty september and you know i almost wish i'd read the the new translation although the translation i read was excellent but but you know i hope that will bring a few more english-speaking readers to read this novel because it, this is one of the ones where you think why and how have I not read this before? Why did I not know about this novel? It is, um, Rufo only wrote a couple of books, but they are, he is uh, widely seen by other Latin American writers um, as, uh, you know, an absolute um a central figure in particular and, and and almost the this book was almost the birth of the genre of magical realism not that that was what he thought he was doing but you know people like Marquez and Fuentes and so on you know and uh, heart back to him and and, and your Borges was a huge admirer of this book so you can see where it sits okay in 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 Latin American um literature it's um uh it is magical realism but it's also like a ghost story i guess um but not really horror although you do feel that huge sense of unease of there's definitely a really creepy quality to this book but it's kind of it, it, it it's more sort of kind of modernist i suppose in its in its structure it's um it's about a man who or no it's about two men but but the initial protagonist is um a man whose mother is dying or and her dying wish is that he should go back to their hometown and try to find his father and then so the book is kind of about him and about the man he's looking for his father so he he goes back but what he finds himself in is basically a ghost town um it's it's a confusing read you know, there's a lot about it. It, it you, you know, it jumps around in time. You don't know where you're in, in what's the, the book's kind of present present day or the book's past or what point in the past. It, you you slip between characters. It's yeah, there it's not it's not easily digestible, but it's a it's a stunner of a book in 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 my opinion. Um and uh, you know, it's a hundred percent odd, a hundred percent confusing, but if you it's if you give it that time and attention, it pays you back. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Um, book number three uh, in my ascending order is a much more straightforward cup of tea, but uh, just a very enjoyable story. Um, now, you know that I have a scally dandling project on to read a, a book by an author from every country in the world. And some of the, uh, the countries I've got down to now, sometimes the thing that I can find in English to read that is available is you know, almost invariably interesting, but it's not necessarily going to be a great, great read in, in, in more sort of literary terms. But sometimes I hit on one that absolutely is. And this is one of those. So, um, this book is Co-Wives, Co-Widows by um, Adrienne Nubuza. It's the first adult novel to be available in English by an author from the Central African Republic. Um, it was translated, um, well, Nubuza wrote it in 2015. It was translated in 2021 by Rachel um, McGill. And what to say about this book? Yabuza, um when she returned from exile to the Central African Republic, worked for years as a hairdresser in the capital, Bangui. And she says, and you can tell, that those, you know, that that hairdressing salon thing where people are there and they're talking and they're telling stories and they confide things about their lives or talk about their neighbours. You know, that that's the, the inspiration for, for this this book and, and probably her other books too. And um, it's, you know, 
reading it, those the, the main characters absolutely felt to me like like real women that I could have met them in her in her hairdressing salon and and heard their stories there. Um, it, it's 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 wry. It's it's an angry book on one level about you know the way women are treated in Central African Republic about um, political corruption and you know personal sort of uh, uh, corruption and abuse. Um, it's it's but it's also really, really warm and and kind of woman positive, you know, sort of feminist in the broadest sense. Um, it's not a complex book. Uh, I, I can, I, you know, I imagine, you know, Yabuza would have would hope that you know the women that that came to a hairdressing salon would would enjoy reading this book, you know, in the same way that I enjoyed reading it. But it was just like the time that I spent with. Um, and Dogo Passi and um, Greg Pubu and, you know, the two women, co-wives, co-widows, and as they just refuse to take lying down the way they are blamed and the sort of injustice that people try and wreak on them after the sudden death of their of their of their husband. Um, you know, it's just, yeah, it will it will stay with me forever, I think, that um, you know. I've I've been in their lives and and it was it was great to be with a pair of them. What brilliant women, women characters. Book number two in my not to five, uh, one to five, uh, five to one. <laughs> oh God, come on, Russ, keep your brain working. Book number two um, might seem to be almost the diametrical opposite of co wives, co widows, because it is a complex book. It's long. It's it's challenging at times to read. Its style, you know, is 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 a sort of it's a, deliberately uses a kind of unusual and experimental writing style that that plays with language and you know it, yeah that is the character of this book. But but I'd say it also has some real similarities. Um, so what am I what book am I talking about? Come on, Rose. It's Tomb of Sand by um uh, Geese and Charlie Shri. It came out, she wrote it in 2018. It was translated from the Hindi uh, by Daisy Rockwell and won the 2022 International Um uh, Booker Prize. It's so why do I see a link between the two? Because this is also a book about widowhood. It's also a book about mutual support between women um it's 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 also full of warmth and humor and i mean i had the joy of reading it with a wonderful woman lindy of lindy's my pie reads and i had been perhaps a little put off by the length of the book and the fact that you know i'd heard it was quite experimental and i quite i quite like my experimental novels short rather than long you know how wrong I was. It it reads much faster than than the fatness of the book would imply. And it's just 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 such fun. I had such a happy time reading this book, even though, like the Yabuza novel, it's also about some really tough topics, you know, and you know, in, including uh, the devastation wreaked on um uh, families and relationships and um and communities and women um of the partition of india and pakistan so uh, yeah a, a wonder a wonder of a book and i'm so glad so glad that i gave it the time and attention that meant i i got the rewards of 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 um what is quite a special novel so what's my number one? My number one book in translation, um, novel in translation this year. Um, I don't think that it's going to be a, any surprise to anyone who sort of um, knows me or follows this channel that my number one was um, Boulder by Eva Balthazar, um, translated by uh, Julia Sanchez. So originally written or originally published in Spain in 2020, translated from the Catalan um, by Julia Sanchez in 2023. I've seen this book come up again and again in the the the, the sort of top books of the year by um, readers, uh, other booktubers who who read the kind of things that I read and I love. So so I'm not going to go on and on about it. It's 
it's dark, it's surprising. It I read it in a sort of fervid chunks over 24 hours because it's so intense. Um, the main character is not altogether likable, but totally um uh, I just attached to her, you know. She she was she's she's there for me. She's still be. I read it in May, and you know, Boulder is still. I'm 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 still. She still lives in my head. I guess it's a book about. I guess about the risk of committing to a relationship. Um, and you know, people say, oh, it's about the risk of of um, uh, you know queer relationships and queer parenthood. But I think you know it's, it applies to any relationship and 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 any couple making a choice or not to become parents. And um, you know, completely resonated lots with with me as a as a heterosexual um, woman and parent. I. It, there's it's it's almost painfully honest as a novel about human beings and emotions and 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 you know how how loving we can be but also how selfish i yeah it's it's absolutely yeah my number one i've and I, and i think a more you know probably a more accessible book perhaps than um uh tomb of sand i had real I had real trouble choosing between them as to which should come top if i'm honest and but uh, ultimately i think because uh, both you know uh, uh you know tomb of sand equally is there's scenes from that that are just sort of right there still in my in, in the forefront of my mind when i start to think about it but um there's something about Boulder that I, looking back on it now, I can't believe that it was only just over a hundred pages. Um, you know, it, it feels like huge in in comparison with that. Well, there we go. I'm going to stop there. Um, if you have, as ever, I will say, if you have um, books in translation that you think, oh, if Ros loved those, she ought to read that. Please do tell me because you know a bunch a bunch of these I I've found through that kind of recommendation so it's always welcome um and uh yeah i hope i hope 2024 brings brings you some good um reading and translation too